Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Margarita. I'm a stay-at-home homeschooling mama of four kiddos. On this channel, I share homemaking and motherhood videos. Today, I'm sharing another meal prep slash what's for dinner video. I don't always have a lot of time to cook dinner, but we like to have something fresh and hot every single day. So what I do to accomplish that is meal prep. On Sunday, I sit down and I look at my calendar and figure out what I can make on every single weekday. On certain days, we have extracurricular activities and we come home at six o'clock, so dinner has to be already made. On other days, we stay home all day, so I have a little bit more time. So I look at my calendar, I determine what we're gonna have that week and make my meal plan. And then I make a grocery list and go to the grocery store and get everything I need for the week. I come home and I meal prep. On some weeks, I just prep ingredients. Other weeks that are a lot more busier, I'll make whole casseroles and stick them in the fridge until I need them. So it really depends on what's going on that week. So let's take a peek on what I did this Sunday to prep for the week. And I will also show you how I took those ingredients and created our dinners throughout the week. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I started off my meal prep by baking two loaves of sourdough bread. We eat this throughout the week and as we are running low, I usually make two more loaves in the middle of the week. I look at my meal plan for the week to determine what I need to do. This week, I am not making any casseroles, but I do have a lot of veggies to prep and also some meat to marinate. I find that doing all of my chopping once a week is so helpful because more than one of my dinners will have onions and carrots. And since I have everything out, I like to chop all the vegetables I will need for the week. Plus, I only have to cry once a week while chopping onions. Once my second loaf of sourdough bread is done, I'm gonna let it cool down and move on to my meat. I like to handle my meat once a week as well. Not only will this save me lots of time throughout the week, but I also can clean and sanitize all of my surfaces once a week and not have to worry about touching any raw meat for the rest of the week. I am grilling some chicken thighs this week, but me and the kids do not like a lot of fat on our thighs. So I take this time to trim off the majority of the fat and any blood vessels and anything really gross off of the chicken. And I'm using this Soyaki Marinade from Trader Joe's. I love this sauce as a teriyaki sauce and a marinade. So I'm just gonna put that over the chicken thighs. I'm also gonna add some pepper, paprika, and salt. Give everything a good stir, and that will be ready for this week. For my drumsticks, I will be marinating them with some mayonnaise. This is some avocado mayo. I add about, I don't know, maybe half a cup. Then I'm going to add some paprika, salt, pepper, some Montreal steak seasoning, and some fresh garlic. And then just use my hands and give everything a good stir.
So I got my bread ready. This will probably last us two or three days. And this is everything I prepped today to help me get dinner on the table on my busy weekdays. So I have my drumsticks that are marinated and I'm gonna have that, we're gonna have that tomorrow. And Cajun chicken is just cubed up. Um, I'm going to put that in the freezer. The grilled thighs will also go in the freezer and I'm just gonna take them out the morning of. And I did all my chopping. Um, I took care of my things for stew, for spaghetti bolognese and for the Cajun pasta. I also needed mushrooms for this. I forgot to buy some. So um, I might pick some up. If not, we'll just have it with peppers and onions. That's fine. So this is everything I prepped today. Now let's see how I turn these ingredients into meals during the week. On Monday, we had stew. I'm starting off by browning some stew cut beef. I like to season it with some salt, pepper, and cumin and I'm going to stir this and cook it until it is starting to brown. While that is cooking, I boil some water and create a broth using the Better Than Bouillon beef base. As the meat is still cooking, I'm going to prepare my potatoes. I just use some russet potatoes or baking potatoes, and I like to cut my potatoes into wedges. If you wanted to prep the potatoes ahead of time, you can just put them in a bowl with some cold water and st store them in your fridge. But I did not have any room in my fridge for a bowl, so I'm just doing this day of. Once my meat has been brown, I'm going to add those veggies that I have prepped yesterday and stir and cook them until they have been softened and the onions are churning golden. I'm going to add about a three or four cloves of garlic, give everything a good stir, and then I'm going to add some tomato sauce. I'm adding in one can of tomato sauce, then I'm going to add four cups of beef broth that I made and four cups of water. I am seasoning the stew with some salt, pepper, and two bay leaves, and then I'm going to add my potatoes in. I will cook this on low heat for about an hour and a half to two hours. You want to cook this low and slow for the meat to get incredibly tender and the potatoes to cook through. Two hours later, this is what my stew looks like. You can totally eat this now, but I like to thicken the broth a little bit, so I always make a little slurry with some cornstarch and water, and I just drizzle it in there, give everything a good stir. In about 10, 20 minutes, we are ready to eat. So this is what dinner looked like, our beef stew and some sourdough bread. Moving on to the next day, I took out the chicken drumsticks, which I marinated on Sunday. I am laying them out on the lined baking sheet. I like my chicken drumsticks to be so tender that they fall off of the bones. And in order to get this, I need to add some liquid to the baking sheet. I like to add about half a cup of water to the bag and swish it around to pick up the marinade. And then I add it to the sheet. I roast the chicken at 375 for about an hour and a half to two hours. I do not flip them. The water evaporates as the chicken bakes and I am left with incredibly tender chicken. To go with the chicken, I boiled some potatoes and I made some mashed potatoes. I love using my stand mixer to whip the potatoes. Just makes life a little bit easier. And as the vegetable side, I made some carrot and cabbage salad. And I just shred the carrot and slice the cabbage real thinly. And I dressed the salad with some salt, pepper, fresh garlic, oil, and vinegar. I love to serve the salad with potatoes. I just feel it goes so well with this meal. Moving on to the third day of the week, I am making Cajun chicken pasta. I took out the chicken that I prepped. I'm going to stir fry it. I like to season it with some salt, pepper, paprika, and Cajun seasoning. 
I'm stir frying the chicken so it's cooked through on all sides and I have some water boiling where I will be cooking one pound of pasta. Once the chicken has cooked through, I'm just removing it from the pan. Next, I'm going to stir fry the vegetables that I prepped on Sunday. I have some onion and bell peppers, and I was able to stop by the store and grab some mushrooms. So I'm going to stir fry this until the vegetables are cooked through. I like to season this layer as well. I'm seasoning it with some salt, pepper, and some Cajun seasoning. I'll add this recipe down below for you. I do not follow it exactly, but it is a good place to start if you've never made Cajun chicken pasta. I highly recommend it, it's very delicious. Now that the veggies are cooked through, I'm gonna add some fresh garlic, and afterwards I'm going to add the chicken back into the pan and make the sauce using the heavy cream. So this is what dinner looked like. I have some Caesar salad as the side today and our Cajun chicken pasta. Moving on to the next day, I took out this vegetable fried rice from the freezer for our family of six. I like to use two packages and I have my grilled thighs that have been frozen and defrosted. For my fried rice, I like to add some scrambled eggs to it. So I am going to scramble about five or six eggs. This helps bulk up the meal because the two packages look like a lot of rice, but it really is not, not for our family. I am preheating my grill outside as I am working on my eggs. I like to scramble my eggs first, then I'm going to remove them from the pan and use the same pan to stir fry my rice. I like to cook my chicken thighs on low to medium heat, about a temperature of 350 on the grill. Back in the house, I just took the same skillet, didn't even wash it. I'm adding some avocado oil and sesame oil, and I'm going to add my two pouches of frozen rice into the skillet. I'm going to stir fry it until it is completely warmed through and all of the liquid has evaporated. Back outside, my chicken is ready to be flipped over and cooked on the other side. The rice has been warmed through. I'm just adding the scrambled eggs I made earlier back into the pan. I'm going to stir fry this with some soy sauce. And then I'm going to add a little bit of green onions to the pan to give it even more flavor. For the vegetable side, we are having some steamed broccoli today to go with our rice and chicken. When the chicken is cooked through, I just take it off the grill and let it sit for a few minutes. And then I like to cut it into strips ahead of time. I steam my broccoli for about six to seven minutes. And then I like to toss it in a bowl with some salt, butter, pepper, and garlic powder. 
So this is what dinner looked like. This is one of my favorite things to make because it is so easy and so delicious. And if we do have leftovers, they make great leftovers. Moving on to the last day, I'm making some spaghetti bolognese. I cut about one pound of beef into small, tiny little cubes, as small as you can get. I season it with some salt and pepper and I'm going to fry it until it is a golden brown. Then I'm gonna add those vegetables that I prepped earlier in the week and stir fry everything together until the veggies are cooked through. Once the vegetables are cooked through, I like to add a couple cloves of garlic to it. I'm going to stir fry it for about 30 seconds and then I'm going to add two cans of tomato sauce followed by two cans of water. I season my sauce with some salt, pepper, and some oregano and basil. I like to cook the sauce low and slow for about two hours on low heat. As you can see, it's very watery and red right now. When it is done cooking, it's gonna be thick and a lot darker in color. Right before dinner, I do like to cook my spaghetti so it's nice and fresh, and I do like to break it in half. It's just a lot easier for my younger children to eat. When the spaghetti is done cooking, I drain it into a colander, and then I like to add some olive oil and garlic salt to the spaghetti and toss everything together. So this is what the sauce looks like when it is done. As you can see, it really has simmered down. All the water has evaporated. The meat is very tender. This is one of my kids' favorite things to eat. This is what dinner looked like today. I just made a fresh salad to go with the spaghetti bolognese. I hope this video was helpful and you got some ideas. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos from me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.